。Yes。哈？哦。Okay, let's uh, get let's get started. Okay. Good morning. Um, so today this is the second week that we are going to deal with probability, right? The probability, especially, uh, how we can apply probability in business, right? We want to use probability to estimate the uh, expected outcome, right? Of uh, different strategies, so if we know the expected outcome of different strategy. We can make a choice, right? That's basically how we use probability in uh, uh, in business. So let's have some quick review first, right? So what is probability? Probability is the ratio, right? When we are dealing with uh, some uncertain uncertainty. Now, uh, what we mean by uncertainty is that it, uh, these things would, 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 would have different outcomes, right? It might, 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 might come with different outcomes, right? And we do not know which outcome will come out, right? You do it repeatedly, uh, you will have like different outcome every time. So, uh, so what is probability? It is the ratio that each outcome uh, would occur, right? Okay? When you do a repeated random uh, things, and the outcome is uncertain. You do not know which outcome will come out next time, right? But uh, based on your experience, uh, you can estimate the ratio that uh, certain outcome would uh, come out, right? And that that ratio is called probability, isn't it? Right. So probability is a ratio by itself. But in order to calculate probability, uh, most medically we need to define some terminology, right? That's where uh, random experiment, experiment and random variable kick in, right? Okay. So um, in most medically, we uh, kind of treat these uncertain things, this uncertainty, as a random experiment, right? And the outcome uh, is treated as a random variable, right? Okay? So, uh, variables have uh, certain different types, right? Uh, some outcomes, they are categorical, right? When the customer comes into your store, uh, she could buy A, she could buy B, she could buy C, or she might not buy anything at all, right? So that is called categorical outcome. Customer come in, um, he might buy anything on the shelf. And every, if he only buy one thing, then, then there is a probability, right? So that, that type of outcome is categorical, right? Um, so uh, the other type is... Uh, now, uh, besides categorical, we have the other type of uh, outcome, right? What is the other type of outcome? Categorical, and the other type of outcome is... Uh, 
uh, well, you're almost right, but <laughs> so that that is the tricky part, right? That's the tricky part. We can you 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 kind of jump to this point, okay? Because uh, in contrast to categorical, it's actually numerical, isn't it? Right? And numerical outcome actually have two types, okay? We have discrete numeric, which is count, right? Uh, you, you count, uh, the customer will buy one, will buy two, will buy three, right? But he cannot buy like 2.5, right? Okay, so numeric has two different types of numeric. Uh, it's, it could be count, which is discrete, and it could be continuous, which is uh, like, like uh, your weight, your height, right? That could be anything that that outcome is actually continuous numerics right okay so uh but in order to calculate uh the, the probability of certain events right uh we will need a thing called distribution isn't it right now uh the probability is the ratio that certain outcome would occur, right? And and if we put all of the value together, right, we want to we want to have a um kind of like a summary. We want to know how uh the the, the relative ratio that each outcome would occur. Okay? We want to see the relative ratio that each different outcome would occur, right? That's called distribution. Okay? Right? So when, 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 if the outcome is discrete, it's easier, right? Because for each outcome, we can see its probability, right? So you list all of the probability of every different outcome, then you have the distribution of a discrete variable. Get it? Okay? So, so what is the difference between probability and distribution? Is anyone? Probability is one thing, right? I tell you it's it's a ratio, it's a relative ratio that certain outcome would occur, right? That is probability. It attached to a outcome one outcome right now distribution is different it's kind of like a summary that tell you how right how the probability varies across different outcome right so uh i would say that uh the event that uh one would occur is like this high right that is the probability of uh if outcome one right but distribution, we, we when we when we say distribution, we are talking about all of the all of the value that it, which is possible, right? That is distribution. Now, the distribution for discrete variable is easier, right? Because it's discrete, so you have uh, you have a numbers of outcomes, right? You actually know how many outcomes there are because they are categorical isn't it, right? But the continuous, continuous distribution is tricky, right? Because, because when, when you're dealing with this uh, uh, continuous uh, variable, now, every value is possible, right? 20 is possible, 20.1 is possible, 20.11 is also possible. 21111111 is also possible, right? So every outcome is actually possible. But if you are... Uh, but actually, uh, the variable, let's say weight, the variable weight uh, occur on a specific outcome. For example, 19, that 9999999995, right? Now, it's, it's almost zero, right? Because it, you cannot... In, in, in the in the numeric space, right, uh, the probability of a specific value is actually nothing, right? 
So you need you need to uh, you need to use the term called density to describe the uh, probability function, right? So I mean, for discrete variable, it it is easy because the value is like one, two, three, four, five, right? So it, it, it's easy, right? But for numeric variable, for numeric variable, the uh, its distribution has to be described by the probability function, right? Okay, so probability density function. Okay, so uh, which means that you, you, you actually need to uh, have a range of value before you know its probability, right? Because a single value for numeric variable, a single value do not have probability, right? You need to have a range. You need to have a range of value before you have a capability, have a probability, isn't it? Right? So that, that's the idea of density function. Okay? So the uh, the area that under the density function is actually the probability. Right? Okay. So uh, if we we have a different type of form to represent the density function, right? And that's why we, uh, that's how we, that's how we uh, uh, do it in this app, right? Uh, for some reason, this app uh, is kind of broken. I don't know why, <laughs> because I do not touch it for, for a week. But uh, for some reason, uh, the app is not working. I'll fix it later. Uh, I mean the uh, the slider bars disappear, right? <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I, I will fix it later. Okay. So uh, the program is still good. Okay. So uh, let's also review our uh, the case that we used uh, last week, right? Let's we go to the case of uh, the old fast, the old the old fastful, uh, uh, geyser in the Yellowstone uh, National Park, right? Okay, so um, now uh, in real case, uh, we know that the. The variable that we are interested is actually the eruption time, right? Because that that geyser would uh, have many, many times of eruption, and every time the eruption time, the duration of eruption, are different, right? So uh, we actually have some record of uh, of this uncertain event, right? When we Record uh, the uncertain event. We will have a sample, right? Because that uncertain event could like like could occur like in finite times, right? It could occur like in normal of times, right? But we cannot record everything, right? So uh, in this case, we only record like two hundred and seventy-two eruption times, okay? So. We want to deal with this uncertain event, and we observed the history, and we see that uh, we have a we record uh, uh, some events, and we call that a sample, isn't it? Right. So this two hundred and seventy-two now to this uncertain event is a sample, right, of the eruption, isn't it? It's just a sample. It's not. It's not the entire thing, right? So we, when we want to use this sample to uh, to help us make estimation, we will need to do a thing called model, right? Isn't it? Okay. Now we are dealing with an uncertain event. Uh, we can try to record its history, right? But whatever we do, we can only do a portion of the outcome, right? And that portion 
that we record is called our sample, right? If we want to use this sample to estimate uh, the, 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 the probability of certain event, right? We need to build a model first, right? Because we do not know everything. Uh, we only have uh, a portion of data and we want to use this data to do a general, to, to inference the general situation, isn't it? Sample is actually uh, only a specific portion, right? Now we want to generalize, generalize this sample so that we can generally inference the probability of certain event, right? That's what we do in this pen. Still remember, right? Uh, so this is, uh, let me, so it's not so confused. So this is the data, right? Do you see the data? <laughs> you see the data, yeah? See, this is called data rocks, right? We put a mark on every uh, on every occurrence, isn't it? It's called data rocks. Well, theoretically, this is a model. Okay, we can use it to estimate uh, probability, right? Okay, uh, when we estimate probability, uh, we use CDF, right? Okay, so if each of this mark is 2070, uh, 1 over 2072, right? It's the probability of each mark. Then you do a, a integration, then you will have a CDF, right? So you can actually use this uh, CDF to estimate probability. It, it will not be, uh, it, it, it will actually be uh, quite, quite, quite good, okay? The problem is uh, this data rock, they are, What's happened? Okay. Uh, the data rock, the mathematical form of the data rock is too complicated, right? Because the mathematical form are too complicated and it, uh, we don't like it, right? So uh, we would choose a easier uh, form. So, so when, when we talk about doing model, uh, there are many different model forms, okay? Data rock by itself is a, is a model form. Uh, histogram is another model form, right? And uh, this continuous density function is another form, right? Okay. So nowadays we would like to we prefer to use the density function uh, because the density function uh, mathematically is easier, right? Easier to understand, and uh, even more important is it it. it it is more reasonable, right? Okay? The density, the probability density of a uh, geyser eruption, it should not be like, it should not be like this, right? Uh, if I take this down. It should not be like, like this, right? This quantize, the stepping thing is not reasonable, right? It's not realistic, isn't it? Right? A more realistic model is things like density function, isn't it? Right? Okay. So 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 this process. Now remember, now when we deal with this uh, uncertain event, we try to record the history, and by recording the history, we have a sample. Right? The sample has a finite size. Right? You you cannot record everything. Right? So now use this specific sample. You want to inference the general. You want to build a general model that can use to inference future event, right? I mean, in general, right? So when we do the from sample to a model, it's actually a process of generalization, right? We generalize the sample into a model, and 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 then after that, we can use the model to. Uh, to estimate, right, uh, the s 
So we say that uh, the probability that the next occurrence would uh, the the next eruption time will fall between two point five to four is actually eighteen point eight, right? Isn't it? Okay. So now this is basically how we use uh, data to build model and use model to do prediction. Isn't it? Okay. We use data to build model, we use model to do prediction. And then I told you that uh, we don't do the prediction for nothing, right? Okay. We need to go into our business scenario. Remember this, right? So uh, if you are a tourist uh, helicopter company, right? You uh, now it's important for you to uh, to estimate the the eruption time, and uh, we have already do some exercise, isn't it? Right. So this week you do you you do this right. I told you that you uh, you need to like we. I actually give you a, a notebook, right? And uh, in this notebook, uh, there's some code, right? I told you to like take a look at this code, right? And um, the first case is actually uh, easier, right? You uh, the game is like. Um, the game is something like uh, you can you can press a bet, right, on sixty seconds, right, on every sixty seconds is in interval, right, and the cost uh, the cost of the bet is like thirty dollars, right, and if the next eruption time fall within the sixty second that you pick, you will win a hundred, right. So so the question is, do you want to join the game? And then, if you join again, which period would you choose? And then, now in the period that you choose, what is the expected value of the game, right? What is your expected payoff if you pay 30 for that 60 second, right? That is the first exercise that we have done, right? Okay? So, and we, in R, we, uh, we solve the problem in these four lines of code. Okay. So, uh, the actually it's only three lines of code. This this time is actually just low in the <laughs> low in the uh, the package, right? And then, so what does it mean? What is x one? Anyone? You still remember this, right? This is your last week's uh, uh, assignment, isn't it? What is X1? Let's get into uh, our studio. And uh, this is the hard thing. So X1 is something like this, right? This is X1, right? Because we want to pick a period, right? Uh, and, and the period need to have a starting time, isn't it? Right? So you set the starting time from 0 to 5. Okay, uh, this thing is called from zero to five, and I want to step it. Every step is zero one, right? Okay, so I just now usually in the in the programming environment, uh, we want to do simulation, right? Okay, 
So this this is this is just like we uh The thing is, it is exactly like we want to do it this way. Now this is sixty second, right? So I in, in every now we want to slide the period, right? One by one, okay? Isn't it? We want to do this in program, right? So we don't need to like like use the simulator to uh, to do it like many many times, right? Uh, so so first of all, we uh, in order to do this simulation, right? We have a model. Now we want to use a simulation to simulate the outcome of each of our strategy, isn't it? That's the idea, okay? So before you want to do simulation, uh, you need to specify the strategy, isn't it? Right? So uh, in this case, the strategy is the period. Now X1 specify the starting time of that period, okay? Now, uh, we already know that uh, we can use this uh, integration. If, if we integrate the PDF, right? Uh, we will know the probability between x1 and x2, right? Okay, so uh, this thing is just, uh, you just copy this code, right? And then the code is here. So you see that, uh, oh, sorry, uh, because right now I'm used x2, x plus 1, right? Okay. So this is the starting time, and this is the starting time plus one minute, which is 60 seconds, right? Because the unit of, uh, of the data is actually minutes, okay? So here we have to use one for 60 seconds. Now, so, so what does this as apply do? If we, if we, if we, uh, now, uh, this line of code is actually doing this as apply and put the outcome of as apply in P, right? And then we put everything into a data frame, right? Let's see. Uh, after, after the... Uh, uh, this is X, right? This is x plus 1. So this is the starting time and stop time. And this is the probability, isn't it? This is why we want to learn R, right? Because after you learn R, as long as you have the model, you can use it to simulate whatever uh, you, want to, uh, you want to do, right? Okay? So in this data frame, you actually see the Right? This is a strategy. This is a strategy. This is yet another strategy. And you get the probability, isn't it? Okay. So what is the highest probability? Still remember this top N, right? So I want to pick out the... Right? So this is the... This is the period that has the highest probability, right? So the period that has the highest probability would, would, would generate the highest expected payoff, isn't it? Right? So, so we know this P is the things. Uh, how do we want to calculate the expected value? Anyone? So what is the expected value if we press our bet in 3.9 to 4.9? I'll do that. Now, I mean, if you place a bet on 3.9 to 4.9, right? The probability that you will win 100 is how many? 
Yeah, 47%, right? Okay. So actually, if I press the bet, right, the expected outcome would be something like, right? Is that right? Is that the net expected outcome? No, right? So <laughs> this is the, this is your, uh, the expected uh, earning, right? But you also have a cost, isn't it? Right, the cost is like 30, right? So this is the net expected payoff if you do this strategy, isn't it? Right? That is uh, what we have done last week. And uh, the thing that I, would, I, I want you to, to, uh, to do is something like this, right? Still remember that? Anyone uh, ever uh, done the, the exercise on this one? No? Okay, <laughs> this is your assignment this week, you know? You've got to uh, pay attention. Okay, so now we... Uh, Let's try to uh, see the case, okay? So read the case. First of all, read the case. So it's a little bit more complicated, right? It's more complicated. Because right now, uh, the betting interval is to 10 seconds, right? And you can place multiple bet, okay? Now, the betting period is to 10 seconds, okay? Uh, and you can place multiple bet. So uh, you want to choose some period and then place the bet to get the maximum uh, net expected payoff, right? So this is the code that help you to uh, place the bet, right? Okay? So if, if the game rule is, is things like this, then you should place the bet on nine period, okay? Nine different 10 second period. And this is the uh, expected payoff uh, for each, uh, for each payoff, for each uh, period, right? Okay. Um, so as, as you can see that we basically repeat what we have done, right, in the previous case. But this time we uh, string it to like five seconds, okay? And at the end of the, F after we uh, acquire this data frame, uh, we actually filter out the, the cases that has probability, uh, sorry, has the net payoff uh, larger than zero, right? So as you can see, uh, if, we, if we take a look at this data frame, we will see something like, Let me do this and also after the simulation you should also see a data frame called df right so in this in this data frame you will see the starting time and ending time right and then uh you have the probability and you will have the net expected payoff, right? So you don't want to bet on the net expected payoff that is negative, right? You want to bet, up the bet on the positive uh, expected payoff, right? So uh, that's why we do this filter, right? 
you only want to bet on the period that give you positive expected expected payoff, isn't it? Right? Then that's the uh, and then uh, after the filter, I just print out the bet. Okay. Okay. So this is the strategy. If if your if your objective, if your business objective is to acquire the largest expected payoff, right? Which is usually the case, okay? Then this is the thing that you should do. Okay? Now, that 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 is the important thing that we want to teach in in this class, right? You already have another class that teach you probability and statistics, right? So how many of you are in uh, Professor Li Chen Xian's uh, course this semester? Some of you are, right? And that I believe is a necessary, is a, is a mandatory course, right? So. Uh, at the end, every one of you will have will learn uh, probability and statistics in that course, right? Uh, in this course, we will try to teach you how to use statistic and probability to do business uh, decision, right? And this is the way that we do it, okay? Because you can write program, so you can do simulation, so you can simulate every possible strategy and then pick out the best one. Right? That's the way we do things. Now, let's see uh, case three. Okay? You, 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 you have not read uh, this thing, right? So I'll give you some time to read it. Okay? Take a look at it. Now, in this case, we have two different business objectives, right? The first thing is steer the net expected outcome. The second thing is the expected ROI, which is the ratio of expected return versus the amount of investment. Okay. ROI, uh, you, you, you know this, right? Okay. It's a very, very... Uh, uh, common uh, term in, in business, right? So right now we are looking for two things. We are not only looking for a good expected payoff, we also want to have a best expected ROI, okay? Now you have two business objective, right? Now we want to use this simulation to help us do the uh, decision, isn't it? Okay? That's that's the point of uh, of this simulation, okay? You get the point, right? So can you answer this question? This is the uh, this is actually the uh, result of the simulation, right? We uh, kind of like uh, the game rule is the same, right? Uh, as case two, you can bet on every 10 second period, okay? And uh, you need to pay five. You bet five dollars on every 10 second period. And if uh, if the next eruption time fall into the, uh, the, the interval, then you win 100, right? Okay, so the game rule is the same. But now you want to you want to find a strategy that maximizes your expected ROI, right? Okay. So, uh, well, the we can basically use the uh, DF to help us do the uh, calculation, right? Because in DF, we already have this is the way that we do the DF, right? 
So we, we, already, we already know that DF is something like this. For every five second period, for every five second period, we already have their probability. And we already calculate their net expected payoff, right? Now for every period, we also want to calculate its expected ROI, right? Okay, so uh, that's what we want to do. And that is basically uh, the things, okay? So um, the first things I do is, what is this? What is the purpose of this uh, command? I arrange it by decreasing payoff, right? So uh, the period with the highest the, the payoff is uh, on top, and then the, the, the regular are actually order by decreasing payoff, right? That's the first thing that I do. And then the next thing is I, I actually put the one, two, three, four, five, right? Just raw number thing is just to like count the things, right? So if you want to place the bet, actually we, we will always place the press our bet on the, right? On the, uh, from the highest payoff, right? So, uh, so I can place one bet, I can place two bet, I can place three bet. Right, so uh, if I press one bet, uh, this is uh, my investment. If I press two bet, I need to invest ten dollar. Right, if I press five bet, I will need to pay twenty five. Right, so this C invest is easy, isn't it? Okay. And that is C payoff. We already do it, right? We use the same, uh, but. Um, Payoff is this thing. We already calculate the payoff, isn't it? Right? In in the last uh, case, we already calculate payoff. And the C payoff is actually the cumulated payoff. Right? See? So this A517 is actually 4576 plus this one. Right? Cumulated payoff, which means that uh, if I bet on period one and two, right? So it's cumulative, okay? So this column is actually just the cumulative sum of this column. You get, you get a point? Anyone who do not know what is cumulated? What is cumulation? No, right? You got it, right? So this is the cumulated investment and this is the cumulated payoff, right? So with these two things, we can calculate the cumulative ROI, right? Isn't it? See? Because it's the, 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 this is the definition of ROI, right? Right? Okay. So your decision is how many bet you should praise, right? So in order to get the highest expected ROI. Right? So can you see, uh, can you answer this question by using this simulated result? result? By the way, uh, th th this notebook is here. It's, uh, This notebook is uh, is here, okay? Oh, sorry, it's this one, okay? If you uh, press this, you will see uh, uh, this notebook, okay? So the question is, now you have this simulation, okay? What is the answer of uh, these three questions? The time is actually uh, 9.56. I'll give you some time to discuss these three questions uh, within your team, okay? Okay, so uh, 
and then we'll take a break. So we'll be back at uh, 10 after 10, and then I will, uh, we, we, we will discuss the, uh, the answer of these three questions, okay? Any question? Okay, so uh, start your uh, group discussion. So any question, just raise your hand, I can answer your question, okay? Thank <sighs> you.